The Assets panel in Affinity Programs is a way you can save your artwork across files. Today we'll look at this feature and see how it can make your workflow faster and easier. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today I'll be talking about the Assets panel in Affinity Programs. It works in Affinity Designer, Photo, and Publisher, but for the most part today I'll be using Affinity Designer. Now by default, this panel isn't shown. So to show it, what you want to do is you want to select Window and then Assets. And you get this panel here. What this tool helps us do is store our graphics for reuse across different files. Now by default, it comes with a pre-made set of icons here. So if you click this button here, you can choose simple flat icons. The name has changed over the years, but that's what it is these days. And it gives you lots of cool icons related to designing UX features. So this is a good free set to begin with. And if you want to use these, what you do is you click on one and just drag it out to your canvas. And note that these are vector objects, so you can double click into them and modify them as you see fit. For example, you can change the colors and you can do any other vector operations you want with them. Now, what you probably want to do is create your own assets and save them. So first, what you'll want to do is create a category. So there's these three lines up here. If you click on them, I can select create new category. And then I'll give it a name. I'll just call it Trent Demo. And I'll hit enter. Now, by default, I got this subcategory called assets. That's what this is here, a subcategory. I can create other subcategories. So with my category selected here, I'll select these three lines again. I'll say create subcategory. And you can see it just called the assets too. If I want to rename it, you click the three lines here and click rename. So I'll call it say logos. I'll click OK. I can also change this default one. So maybe I'll change it to shapes and click OK. So now I have two subcategories. So let's actually create some shapes and add them as an asset. I'll just make a little design here, something quite simple. Maybe I'll make a little retro sun design here. I'll cut these lines on my shape and I'll call this sun. Change the color a little bit. Now there are two ways I can make an asset out of this. I can click and I can drag it over to the subcategory I want. So I'll let go. And you can see it got added over here. If I want to delete it, I can right click on it here and say delete asset. And I'll confirm it. Perhaps an easier way to add it is to select your object. And then for your subcategory, click on the three lines and say add from selection. And that's another way to add it there. So I could create another shape. Give it some design here. And with it selected, I'll go and I'll add it to my assets. Now I want to review how to delete an asset because it's very easy to accidentally delete too much. To delete an asset, right click on the asset and say delete asset and you confirm it. If you click on these three lines up here and say delete, this is going to delete your whole subcategory. So I'll say yes, that removed all the assets in that subcategory. Furthermore, if you click the three dots up here, you can delete your entire selected category. So I'll say delete category and that will remove Trent demo. So just make sure you're actually using the right menu to delete what you want to delete because it's easy to make a mistake and I've done that a couple times myself. Now when you see your assets here, something you can do is you can rename them. So I can right click on my star here. Let's rename it and I'll call it cool star. Now the point of giving things good names is that you can actually search on them. So on my search menu here, if I type cool, you can see my star is appearing here. I'll delete that. Now if you want to see what your shapes are actually called, you can click the three lines up here and choose show as list. Then you'll get a list of all your assets with the names next to them. Now the whole point of assets is that when I create a new document, my assets are there for reuse. So let's do that. I'll create a new document. Any size is fine. And then I'll show my assets panel, window assets. And I have my shapes here again for reuse. So I'll drag them in and I can reuse them anywhere. If I closed Affinity Designer and reopened it, these assets would still be available. Now, a question you may have is, can I share these assets between Affinity programs? And the answer is yes, but it's not enabled by default. So I created this logo in Affinity Designer. Let me add it to my assets panel here. I'll add from selection. Let me go into Affinity Photo now and see if I can actually view these assets. So I'll open Affinity Photo. I'll go to Window, Assets. You can see I don't have my Trent Demo options there. Let me go back to Affinity Designer. To share the assets, what you need to do is have your category selected here. And with the three lines, click them and select link category. So I'll click this. Now you see the little chain icon there. If I go back to Affinity Photo, now if I click the drop down, I actually have the Trent demo options here. So I'll click that and my assets are available. So I'll click this, I'll drag it in. 
and it's visible. The same thing happens in Affinity Publisher. So I open the Affinity Publisher here. Let me create a new document. I'll just create anything. I'll go to Window, Assets. And if I click the drop down, my assets are there. So I'll click that and I can drag in my shapes. So now if I'm in Affinity Designer, if I create a new shape and add it to my assets, it will be available in all the programs. So let me create a little shape here. Maybe I'll make a donut for my coffee shop. Could have sprinkles on the donut, of course. Now you can see this object has a lot of different pieces to it here in my layer stack. If you want to add it as one asset, you have to group it all together. So I'll select this whole thing and I'll select Control G to group it. I'll call it Donut. And now with this whole thing selected, I can add it into my shapes. I'll select Add Selection. If I have two different shapes selected, so let me do that. These are two separate shapes in my layer stack. If I select both of them, if I say Add Selection, it'll add them individually. So that can be what you want sometimes, but if you have a big complex shape and you want to add it all as one asset, make sure it's actually a group. So now I've added them to my assets over here. If I go to say Publisher, now they appear over here. I can just click and I can drag them in. Now, if I want to break this connection, what I can do is select the three lines over here and you can say delete category. Now you want to be careful with this one because it gives you some options here. You can just remove these assets from this app, which is publisher, or I can delete it from all my apps, Affinity Photo, Designer, and Publisher. I'm just going to say delete from this app. So this is just going to remove it from publisher and it's gone. But if I go back to Affinity Designer, you can see I still have my assets here. Now, a very common thing you may want to do is import a bunch of assets into Affinity programs. These could be assets that you downloaded from the internet or got from a colleague. Here I have an example asset pack and you can see it consists of lots of PNGs and SVGs. Let's see if we can easily bring these into our assets panel. So first I'll download it and I'll just save it to my local drive. Now, once I save it, I can unzip it here. So let's extract it. So I've extracted the files. If we go into the folder, we have PNGs and SVGs in this example here. Let's say we want to use the SVGs, so I can double click on these. So I'll go into the SVG folder here and there are hundreds here. I could select all of them and it would work, but I'll just select a couple of them to make it go faster. And now what I can do is I can click and I can drag these over into my assets panel and I'll let go here. And you can see now they appear over here. Now let me do that using the place command. I think you'll see the place command is a little slow. So with the place command, I'll select these SVGs. I'll open them and then I can click them as I want them to be into our file here, but I have to manually place each and every one. Furthermore, when you place SVGs, you double click on it and you have to edit it in this separate window here. If I go back to my document, if I take one of the SVGs that I added as an asset, if I bring that into my document, I can resize it. I can actually edit right within my document here. When I double click on it, it doesn't bring me into a new tab. So I find dragging into the assets panel to be a much more convenient way than using the place command, but it's really going to depend on what you're doing. Now, one thing you'll notice is that sometimes assets might not be that visible given the dark background. If you click the three dots up here, you can actually change the color of the background. So I'll go background, light, and you can see some things a little bit better, but the words kind of disappeared. You can also add a checker background. So I'll select the three dots again. If you select background, you can say checkerboard. So that makes it a little bit easier to see. So here I have the checkerboard background with the dark mode set. It's going to depend on the colors of your assets, which one's the easiest to see. Now, if you want to export these assets to use on another computer, you can actually use the export command over here and then use the import command on your other computer to bring them in. Do you think the assets panel could speed up your workflow? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this feature. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.